Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 most common tourist vocabulary. Let's begin. Ticket. 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 For example, you can hear Je vais vérifier votre ticket, monsieur. I am going to check your ticket, sir. So this happens a lot when you're in a train. Uh, somebody's going to come up to you and ask for your ticket. Tourist. 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 Les touristes français sont bruyants. <laughs> French tourists are noisy. Um, I don't know why you're saying that. Mm -mm, not true. Itinéraire. Itinerary. Itinéraire. Itinerary. Je dois planifier mon itinéraire. I need to plan my itinerary. Yeah, I love to do that myself. Like, I spend maybe two months before of my time to look for stuff. Guide touristique. Guidebook. Guide touristique. Guidebook. C'est recommandé dans le guide touristique. It is recommended in the guidebook. Bus touristique. Tour bus. Bus touristique. Tour bus. Ce bus touristique est plein à craquer. This tour bus is packed. When I visit new uh, cities, I usually use tour buses, like when I went to Chicago, for example. That's pretty cool. You can see, like, sightseeing and stuff like that. Temple. Temple. Temple, temple. Il y a de très beaux temples au Japon. There are beautiful temples in Japan. I have never been, so I cannot confirm about that, but yeah, maybe. Mosque, 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 mosque. Il y a une mosquée très célèbre à Istanbul. There is a very famous mosque in Istanbul. Église, church, église, church. Cette famille va à l'église tous les dimanches. This family goes to church every Sunday. Yes, that is really important, do it. Cascade, waterfall, cascade, waterfall. Il a pris une jolie cascade en photo. He took a picture of a beautiful waterfall. Yeah, we love to go to the, the Ni ah, Niagara Falls. <laughs> Niagara. Ni oh my gosh! Okay, so maybe <laughs> put it again. <laughs> Ni how do you say? Niagara. Niagara? Yeah. Niagara, but this, really? Visiter. To tour. Visiter. To tour. Ma famille va visiter Rome l'année prochaine. My family will visit Rome next year. I haven't been to Rome, but I have been to Milano and Venezia. Beautiful. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Which phrase did you like the most? Leave us a comment letting us know. Hi everyone! I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning French. Let's begin! Je m'imagine qu'un jour j'irai visiter ou habiter en France. I imagine that one day I will visit or live in France. France has many beautiful cities with nice things to see and good food. Whether it's just for sightseeing or living, it's really worth it. J'étudie également d'autres aspects de la langue, ce qui rend l'apprentissage du français plus enrichissant. I also study other aspects of the culture, which makes it more rewarding to study. French. It's always interesting to compare your own culture to others, to understand why things are the way they are. By doing research, you can avoid certain culture shocks while traveling. J'aime trouver des mots drôles en apprenant le français. I like to find funny words in French. It's easier to remember words when you associate them with something. Je deviens ami avec des personnes qui parlent le français. I make friends with people who speak French. 
It's really helpful to talk to native speakers, especially those who don't understand your mother tongue, as it forces you to speak. It's a very good way to improve your speaking skills. Je regarde les vidéos YouTube de personnes ayant appris le français avec succès. I watch YouTube videos from other people who have successfully learned French. It's always good to get some advice from other people who have been there. Since everybody is different, you might find some things easier and other things harder than they do. J'aime utiliser le français pour passer des commandes dans des restaurants français. I enjoy using French to order at French restaurants. If the waiters and waitresses are native speakers, they might be impressed and it's a good way to practice ordering food because you will need it if you go to France. Je regarde des films et séries françaises et suis content ou contente quand je peux apprendre un mot ou une phrase. I watch French movies and TV shows and enjoy the feeling I get when I can understand a word or a sentence. Watching movies and TV shows is good for hearing native French, things you don't learn at school and common expressions. If you enjoy watching French shows and movies, you won't feel like it's studying. It will just be fun. Being motivated is the best way to learn. J'ai changé la langue de mon téléphone portable, je l'utilise en français maintenant. I changed the language on my cell phone. I use it in French now. It helps you learn some useful vocabulary from everyday life. Je lis des livres pour enfants en français. I read books for children in French. Children's books have a lot of difficult French words, so it's a good way to learn many new words. J'écris ma liste de courses en français. I write my shopping list in French. This makes both studying French and shopping fun. Je suis des recettes françaises quand je cuisine. Okay, that's all about 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning French. Tu viens au centre Georges Pompidou Le centre Georges Pompidou Qu'est-ce que c'est C'est un musée d'art moderne. Et Georges Pompidou Qui c'est Oh là là, c'est un président français. Vous êtes étudiant Pardon Ah oui Vous êtes étudiant à l'université Oui Et vous, qu'est-ce que vous faites Je suis comédienne. Du cinéma Non, de théâtre. Je vous... Chut Regarde le film Moi, Jeanne. Toi, Tarzan. Hein Moi, Jeanne. Toi, Tarzan. Tu comprends le français euh, Pardon Je ne comprends pas. Tu comprends le français Lentement, s'il te plaît. Tu comprends le français Ah oui, un peu. Tu habites à Paris Oui, j'habite à Belleville. Et toi Non, je n'habite pas à Paris. Tu habites où à Toulouse. D'où tu es Moi, je suis de Klein Frankenheim. Klein Frankenstein Tu es allemand C'est Klein Frankenheim. Non, je suis français. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher. Well, I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is How do I express doubt or uncertainty in English, we usually use modal verbs to express doubt or uncertainty, like might or would. French, however, doesn't have modal verbs. You have to use completely different constructions. Let's start with might, as in I might go to the party. The easiest way to do this is to simply add the adverb peut-être, meaning maybe. So you would get, je vais peut-être à la fête. Another way to say might or may is to use il se peut que, plus the subjunctive. For example, il se peut que la voiture soit en panne, meaning it is possible that the car is broken down, or the car might be broken down. But be careful, if you want to say something might have happened in the past, you have to use past subjunctive. 
So, for example, il se peut que je l'ai lu. This means I might have read it. Or it's possible that I've read it. Let's move on to could and take the sentence I could eat a well. In this case, you're speaking about something you could do in the future. So you use the conditional of the verb can, which is pouvoir. And you get je pourrais manger une baleine. But let's say you want to talk about something you could have done in the past. In this case, you would use pouvoir in the past perfect. For example, j'aurais pu manger une baleine, meaning I could have eaten a whale. Now, let's look at would. You probably already know this form in the present tense. For example, je voudrais le croque-monsieur. I would like the croque-monsieur. This is the conditional present. You may also remember it from a previous lesson about if statements. For example, on partirait si vous étiez prêt, meaning we would leave if you were ready. This is case two, an unlikely situation that could come true if something else happened first. If you want to say that you would have in the past, then just conjugate the verb in the conditional perfect. For example, j'aurais voulu un croque-monsieur, meaning I would have liked a croque-monsieur. Finally, let's talk about should. Should is conjugated as the conditional of the verb devoir, meaning to have to or must. Then you add the infinitive of the verb that you should have done. For example, je devrais manger, meaning I should eat, or on devrait partir, meaning we should leave. This is a very helpful construction. So make sure to memorize the conditional present tense of devoir. If you want to talk about something you should have done, conjugate devoir in the conditional perfect. I should have eaten would be j'aurais dû manger. We should have left would be on aurait dû partir. You should have memorized it would be vous auriez dû le mémoriser. And that's it. I hope that helped. If you have any more questions. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. Billet pour train express. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Voiture une, rangée huit, place C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running?
On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Jour férié, troisième dimanche du mois. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. Le prochain train ne s'arrêtera pas. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Sortie Est Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I form the future tenses and when should I use them? There are two future tenses in French, the futur proche and futur simple. Proche means near. When we use futur proche, we're talking about the near future, things that will happen soon. Conjugation is easy. We use the present tense of aller, to go, and then add the infinitive. So the verb nager, to swim, becomes je vais nager, meaning I'm going to swim. Tu vas nager, meaning you're going to swim. Il va nager, meaning he's going to swim, and so on. To make the future simple, we add the stem plus the ending. The verb stem for e and ir verbs is just the infinitive. So, the verb stem for nager is nager. The verb stem for finir, to finish, is finir. For re verbs, we drop the e. So, vendre becomes vendre. The endings are very similar to the present conjugation of avoir. They're always the same e, a, a, on, e, However, there are irregular stems which you will have to memorize. We go for all the most important ones now, saying the verb, its stem, a simple conjugation, and its translation. Aller, ir, j'irai, I will go. Être, ser, tu seras, you will be. Avoir, or, il aura, we will have. Pouvoir, pour, nous pourrons. We will be able to. Vouloir, voudre, vous voudrez. You will want to. Venir, viendre, elles viendront. They will come. Savoir, 
Sors, je saurai. I will know. Faire, faire, tu feras. He will do or make. Envoyer, envers, elle enverra. She will send. Ok, so which one should you use? You'll use the future proche for the near future and future simple for things that are further in the future. If you are going to go swimming right after this lesson, use future proche. Je vais nager. If you will swim in the ocean on your vacation in Barcelona, use future simple. Je nagerai dans la mer. Future simple is also used in some forms, like if statements. But we will cover those in later lessons, so don't worry about it now. If you use mostly future proche when speaking, you'll be just fine. Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below, and I try to answer them. À bientôt. See you soon. Welcome to Fun and Easy French by FrenchPod101.com. Do you know that there are different forms of greeting someone that you just met in French? Salut, je suis Laurine. Hi everyone, I'm Laurine. In this lesson, you'll learn all about how to introduce yourself in French. Learning how to introduce yourself in French is very important when making new French friends, especially if you're looking into leaving a great first impression with them. It's also not necessary for you to be fluent in French when introducing yourself in any situation. You only need to learn the right tips and tricks to make sure people don't forget about you once they get to know you. In this video, you'll learn first, how to get started when introducing yourself, second, how to learn about each other, then some specific introduction lines, and finally, how to leave an impression and how FrenchPod 101 can help you. Let's start with how to get started. Do you want to make friends with the people in France and create a long-lasting first impression? Then, you need to know what formal greetings in French are. There is a French etiquette that you need to follow when greeting someone in French. Here's the first useful word. Bonjour. Hello or good day. Bon jour. Bonjour is used from morning to sundown. It's not too formal nor too relaxed. Another way to start a conversation is by greeting someone with Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. It's the nighttime version of bonjour and can be used professionally and with your friends. You may also greet by saying Salut, hi, salut, salut. It's the casual version of bonjour that you can use at any time of the day. There are two forms of you in French. Vous, vous, vous for formal encounters or when meeting someone for the first time. And tu. Tu, tu, for more casual interaction or when meeting friends and acquaintance. Another formal greeting in French is shaking someone's hand or using la bise, the kiss. La bise. What are the differences? Let me explain. La bise, or the typical French custom of kissing on the cheeks, can be used when greeting someone of the opposite sex in a casual way, for example, after using salut and tu. But if you're not sure what to do, go for a handshake instead. Next is useful expressions to learn about each other. Now, let's learn about the classic questions and answers that usually come up when you meet someone. Others will not only get to know you, but you'll be able to get to know them as well. But before we begin, you first need to remember that questions have two forms, formal and casual. Answers, on the other hand, mostly have one form only. Let's start with the question, what's your name? Giving your name or asking someone's name in French uses the verb s'appeler. 
s'appeler. S'appeler. The casual form of what's your name is Comment tu t'appelles Comment tu t'appelles Comment tu t'appelles Or Tu t'appelles comment Tu t'appelles comment Tu t'appelles comment The formal form, on the other hand, is Comment vous appelez-vous Comment vous appelez-vous Comment vous appelez-vous Here's an example of an answer. Je m'appelle Bob. My name is Bob. Je m'appelle Bob. Je m'appelle Bob. It literally means I call myself Bob. This is the most common way to state your name and it works in both formal and casual situations. Now, it's your turn to ask the same question. You can casually say, et toi, and you, et toi, et toi, or formally say, et vous, and you, et vous, et vous. When you're being asked back in a casual situation, you can answer, moi, c'est Bob, I'm Bob, moi, c'est Bob. Moi, c'est Bob. Next, I'm going to teach you how to ask and answer back in French with the question Where are you from? The casual form of this question is like this. D'où tu viens? Where are you from? D'où tu viens? Other forms are Tu viens d'où? Tu viens d'où? Or Tu es d'où? Tu es d'où? Another example is De quel pays tu viens? From what country are you from? De quel pays tu viens? De quel pays tu viens? Or Tu es de quelle nationalité? What is your nationality? Tu es de quelle nationalité? Tu es de quelle nationalité? The formal way on the other end is like this. D'où venez-vous? Where are you from? D'où venez-vous? D'où venez-vous? Or, de quel pays venez-vous? From what country are you from? De quel pays venez-vous? De quel pays venez-vous? Another example is quelle est votre nationalité? What is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? Quelle est votre nationalité? If you're from another country, like China, you can answer with the Je viens de Chine. I'm coming from China. Je viens de Chine. Je viens de Chine. Or Je suis chinois. If you're male, je suis chinoise. If you're female, it means I am Chinese. Je suis chinois or je suis chinoise. If you feel like giving the city where you're currently living, you can say Je viens de Paris. I'm from Paris. Je viens de Paris. Je viens de Paris. Or, j'habite à Paris. I'm living in Paris. J'habite à Paris. J'habite à Paris. Next up, we're going to learn the casual and formal way of asking the question What's your profession? and how to answer it in French. Don't worry. In France, it's very common to ask about other people's job in the early conversation. So, Feel free to ask this question or answer back if you're being asked. The casual way of asking about someone's profession is like this. Tu fais quoi dans la vie? What are you doing in life? Tu fais quoi dans la vie? Tu fais quoi dans la vie? Or Tu fais quel métier? What is your job? Tu fais quel métier? 
Tu fais quel métier? In a formal setting, you can ask it like this. Quel travail faites-vous? What is your occupation? Quel travail faites-vous? Quel travail faites-vous? If you're being asked about your profession, you can answer in any of these ways. Je suis étudiante. I'm a student. Je suis étudiante. Je suis étudiante. Or, j'étudie la biologie. I'm studying biology. J'étudie la biologie. J'étudie la biologie. Another one is, je travaille dans l'informatique. I'm working in IT. Je travaille dans l'informatique. Je travaille dans l'informatique. You can also answer with, je suis dans la finance. I'm working in finance. Je suis dans la finance. Je suis dans la finance. Or, if you're a carpenter, you can say, Je suis charpentier. I'm a carpenter. Je suis charpentier. Je suis charpentier. By the way, the keywords here are travail or métier, which means occupation or profession. Travail or métier. During casual conversations, you can replace them with some slang expressions. For example, boulot, 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 or taf, 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 or job, job, job. When meeting someone for the first time, asking about their family isn't really too common. But just in case someone asks you, you might as well learn how to ask or answer it in French. Here are some examples in casual French. Tu es marié? Are you married? Tu es marié? Tu es marié? Tu as des enfants? Do you have kids? Tu as des enfants? Tu as des enfants? Tu as des frères et sœurs? Do you have brothers and sisters? Tu as des frères et sœurs? Tu as des frères et sœurs? In a formal setting, you can ask it this way. Vous êtes marié? Are you married? Vous êtes marié? Vous êtes marié? Vous avez des enfants? Do you have kids? Vous avez des enfants? Vous avez des enfants? Vous avez des frères et sœurs? Do you have brothers and sisters? Vous avez des frères et sœurs? Vous avez des frères et sœurs? Then, you may find yourself answering in any of these ways. Oui, je suis marié. Yes, I'm married. Oui, je suis marié. Oui. Je suis marié. Non, je suis célibataire. No, I'm single. Non, je suis célibataire. Non, je suis célibataire. Non, je suis divorcé. No, I'm divorced. Non, je suis divorcé. Non, je suis divorcé. J'ai deux enfants. I have two kids. J'ai deux enfants. J'ai deux enfants. J'ai un petit frère et une grande sœur. I have a little brother and a big sister. J'ai un petit frère et une grande sœur. J'ai un petit frère et une grande sœur. French people are a bit more sensitive about asking someone else's age, especially for women. But if you meet a young girl or a woman who's comfortable about answering just about any questions, then you may ask about her age. The casual way of asking someone's age is Tu as quel âge? How old are you? Tu as quel âge? Tu as quel âge? Asking in a formal manner is 
Quel âge avez-vous Quel âge avez-vous Quel âge avez-vous Then, you can answer it with J'ai 30 ans. I'm 30 years old. J'ai 30 ans. J'ai 30 ans. Next question you may ask or might be asked of you is a question about your hobbies. The casual way of asking is C'est quoi tes hobbies? Or passe-temps? What are your hobbies? C'est quoi tes hobbies? Passe-temps? C'est quoi tes hobbies? Passe-temps? Or you can also ask, tu fais quoi de ton temps libre? What do you do with your free time? Tu fais quoi de ton temps libre? Tu fais quoi de ton temps libre? The formal way, on the other hand, is, quels sont vos hobbies? What are your hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Or, que faites-vous de votre temps libre? What do you do with your free time? Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? The formal way, on the other end, is Quels sont vos hobbies? What are your hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Or Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? What do you do with your free time? Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? Here are some examples of answering this question in French. Je joue au tennis. I'm playing tennis. Je joue au tennis. Je joue au tennis. Je joue du piano. I'm playing piano. Je joue du piano. Je joue du piano. Je passe mes nuits sur HBO. I spend my nights on HBO. Je passe mes nuits sur HBO. Je passe mes nuits sur HBO. J'écris un journal de voyage. I'm writing a travel diary. J'écris un journal de voyage. J'écris un journal de voyage. Next, let's see some specific introduction lines. Now that you know the most common questions and answers in French, let's now start learning how to introduce yourself with useful French phrases in certain situations. When traveling, you may find yourself conversing with friendly locals. The conversation could go this way. Tu voyages depuis longtemps? You're being asked. Have you been traveling for a long time? Tu voyages depuis longtemps? Tu voyages depuis longtemps? Then, you can answer with Je voyage depuis deux mois. I have been traveling for two months. Je voyage depuis deux mois. Je voyage depuis deux mois. If you are asked, tu as visité quel autre pays? What other countries did you visit? Tu as visité quel autre pays? Tu as visité quel autre pays? You can answer with, je suis allé en Espagne et en Italie. I have been to Spain and Italy. Je suis allé en Espagne et en Italie. Je suis allé en Espagne et en Italie. But what about when you're meeting with your coworkers? You may be asked, tu travailles dans quel service? Which means, in which division are you working? Tu travailles dans quel service? Tu travailles dans quel service? Then, you can answer with Je travaille aux ressources humaines. I'm working with HR. Je travaille aux ressources humaines. Je travaille aux ressources humaines. Another question could be Tu bosses sur quoi en ce moment? What are you working on right now? Tu bosses sur quoi en ce moment? Tu bosses sur quoi en ce moment? 
You may answer it with Je viens de commencer un nouveau projet. I have just started working on a new project. Je viens de commencer un nouveau projet. Je viens de commencer un nouveau projet. When you're in a casual social event, someone might ask you, Tu fais quoi demain soir? What are you doing tomorrow night? Tu fais quoi demain soir? Tu fais quoi demain soir? You may answer with, Je vais au cinéma avec un pote. I'm going to a movie with a pal. Je vais au cinéma avec un pote. Je vais au cinéma avec un pote. Another question you may come across is Tu as un copain? Or Tu as une copine? Do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend? Tu as un copain? Tu as une copine? Tu as un copain? Or Tu as une copine? You may answer with Non, on a rompu il y a deux semaines. No, we broke up two weeks ago. Non, on a rompu il y a deux semaines. Non, on a rompu il y a deux semaines. Another situation you might get into while in France is participating in a family meeting. So, if a family member asks you, Vous vous êtes rencontrés comment? Meaning, How did you meet? Vous vous êtes rencontrés comment? Vous vous êtes rencontrés comment? You can answer it with J'ai rencontré Julie à l'université. I met Julie at the university. J'ai rencontré Julie à l'université. J'ai rencontré Julie à l'université. Another question that you might be asked of you is Comment tu connais Bastien? How do you know Bastien? Comment tu connais Bastien? Comment tu connais Bastien? You may answer it with On travaille ensemble. We work together. On travaille ensemble. On travaille ensemble. Next is how to leave an impression. We would like to share with you a couple of tips that you can use if you want to leave a great impression when making new friends. The first tip is to never make it all about yourself. When someone asks something about you, there is really no need to tell that person everything about you. It will make you more interesting and appealing if you let that person find out what else he can offer or can do. Talk less about yourself. Ask them questions instead. Learn more about their culture or find what they like to do. Focus on getting to know them more. It will make them feel you are interested in them and they will soon feel comfortable to be around you. Another thing you may want to do if you want to leave a great impression is showing your interest by dropping a word of appreciation once you hear that person's name. This can take different forms. Here are some examples. Enchanté, which means delighted. Enchanté, enchanté. Ravi de vous rencontrer, or heureux, or heureuse de vous rencontrer. Happy to meet you. Ravi de vous rencontrer, or heureux, or heureuse de vous rencontrer. Ravi de vous rencontrer or heureux or heureuse de vous rencontrer. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. It's a pleasure to meet you. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. You can cut it down to un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Please to meet you. Un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Or even un plaisir. A pleasure. Un plaisir. Un plaisir. Other forms to show your interests 
when you're greeting in French are Je m'appelle Julie. My name is Julie. Je m'appelle Julie. Je m'appelle Julie. You can then say C'est un très joli prénom. It's a really pretty name. C'est un très joli prénom. C'est un très joli prénom. Another example is Je suis photographe. I'm a photographer. Je suis photographe. Je suis photographe. You can respond with Génial! Quel genre de photo? Great! What kind of photos? Génial! Quel genre de photo? Génial! Quel genre de photo? And J'ai 40 ans. I'm 40 years old. J'ai 40 ans. J'ai 40 ans. You may then say, Vraiment? Tu fais beaucoup plus jeune. Really? You look so much younger. Vraiment? Tu fais beaucoup plus jeune. Vraiment? Tu fais beaucoup plus jeune. The last tip we want to share with you is for you to start a conversation in French. You're likely to make a good first impression if you at least try to converse in French. It doesn't matter if your French is unpolished. They will appreciate you for trying. Saying bonjour, hello, bonjour, bonjour. Or, je ne parle pas français. I don't speak French. Je ne parle pas français. Je ne parle pas français. It's better than not being able to speak any French words at all. Now on to part 5. How can FrenchPod 101 help you? By teaching you French and getting you to speak from your very first lesson. FrenchPod 101's lessons build you up from your first words to mastering entire conversations. And you get lessons from for all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. Enough to take you from knowing zero to speak fluently. You can also learn with your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll correct your French, tell you how to improve your speaking, writing and grammar, and even help you practice for job interviews in French. In this lesson, you learned how to greet in French in casual and formal manner. The most common types of question and answers example of introduction lines, and how to leave a good first impression when meeting a French person for the first time. So, if you want to speak French and learn in the fastest, easiest and most fun way, go to FrenchBud 101. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. 
Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five-minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. 
That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. 
Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done now, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When you start out learning a foreign language, everything is exciting. You pick up new words and basic phrases fairly quickly. The first time you say a greeting or answer the question, how are you, you might even get a little thrill. Speaking fluently doesn't feel that far off. And at this point, it really does seem like language learning isn't all that difficult. But after a week or two, things begin to change. After a few weeks of study, you start to hit walls as you're faced with strange grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Everything about learning a new language seemed promising and hopeful before, but now you start to realize how difficult it's going to be. Speaking the language now feels like a long, far-off goal that you may or may not achieve one day. But don't let the innocence of being an absolute beginner or the disillusionment of being an experienced learner discourage you from learning. Speaking a new language may not be as far off as you thought. In this video, we'll look at three tips to help you practice your speaking skills, no matter what level you're at. Number one, practice with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is by far one of the most effective things you can do to improve your speaking abilities. Think of speaking a foreign language as riding a bike. After a certain point, you can't read or theorize about how to do it. You have to actually do it. If you can practice speaking with native speakers who correct you and give good feedback, then you'll be well on your way to improving your speaking. But where can you find native speakers to practice with? If you live in or near a major city, there's a good chance there are some native speakers there. You might even get lucky and discover an entire community. Do a little research into the demographics of your city, or simply keep your eyes open the next time you go through town. You can also attend a language exchange or cultural event. Meetup is a site for local enthusiast groups, and there are usually some language-speaking clubs or cultural clubs there. If you're unable to find native speakers where you live, then jump online and find them there. There are a lot of free online exchanges that allow you to connect with other language learners from all over the globe via text, audio, or video chat. Look for a speaker who is learning your native language. You can spend an hour or so helping each other in your respective target languages. This is a highly practical and helpful way to learn. It's also a great way to learn more directly about the culture you're studying in a real way. Number two, devote some time to learning pronunciation. Pronunciation often isn't the first skill people think of working on when learning a foreign language, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Truth be told, you don't absolutely need a great accent to speak or understand every language. However, a decent accent can vastly improve your listening and speaking abilities in ways you might not expect. Being able to pronounce words and sounds makes it a lot easier for you to remember and understand new words simply by hearing them. If you can physically make a sound with your mouth, then you can mentally remember it. Once you have a good accent, the new language won't sound as foreign as it once did, and you'll be able to understand rapid speech, as well as pick up the definition of new words based on their conversational context. But how can you improve your accent? 
If you're serious about developing your accent, then you'll want to dissect the language's sound system into its individual parts. First by letters, then individual words, followed by whole phrases. Start doing some mild research on the phonetics of your target language. You don't have to get too technical here. Just try to get an idea of some of the main differences between it and your native language. Find out where native speakers usually put their tongue while saying certain sounds. Or pay attention to the shape of their mouths when they speak. Is it open or closed? These subtle differences are what really help you improve. Once you get the letters down, start listening to native audio and compare your pronunciation to the native speakers. Our language learning program's playback feature is a great way to accomplish this. Take a phrase from a lesson and start by practicing the individual words, playing the audio back at a slower speed and then again at a regular speed. After comparing your speech to the audio, combine the words to make complete phrases, imitating the intonation of the native speakers. This precise method of pronunciation practice is one of the most efficient and effective ways to learn pronunciation. Number three, imitate, don't just repeat. Anytime you speak, do your best to imitate the native speakers you've heard and practice with. Match the way their intonation rises and falls. Pay attention to their word order. It's even a good idea to match some of their body language. This degree of imitation will probably feel weird at first, but it reinforces fluency in the language and breaks you out of the parrot trap where you simply learn and speak through rote memorization or repetition. This is a common problem that's often cited with other less effective language learning methods. Speaking a language is like playing music or dancing. You don't wanna just know it. You wanna live in the moment and feel it as you use it. You don't sit and think of what you're going to say in your native language before you say it. Why would you expect to do the same in a new one? Don't let ruffled expectations make you think that speaking a new language is impossible. Yes, it's difficult, but it probably isn't as difficult as you think it is. With a little determination and some faithful practice, you might be surprised how quick and how far you can progress. Use these tips to better practice the language and see real results in your speaking abilities. And for even more ways to practice your speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.